In this topic, we're going to discuss the menstrual cycle. So we'll look at what are the different hormones involved in the menstrual cycle, what are the changes that occur during the menstrual cycle, and then you should be able to explain the graph of the hormones and relate them to the different phases in the menstrual cycle. So the length of the menstrual cycle varies from individual to individual, and it's usually around 28 days. So we're going to look at what happens to the endometrium during this time, what's happening in the ovaries, and then we're going to look at the different hormones that are involved. So just looking at this diagram here, you can see the endometrium. Notice how it thickens, and then during menstruation, the lining comes away and it's lost through the vagina. Then the endometrium starts to thicken again. When do you think the secondary oocyte, or what a lot of people call the ovum, will be released? Well, it's when the endometrium is nice and thick, just in case fertilization occurs and implantation, it's ready for implantation. So you've got a number of different hormones that control the menstrual cycle and each interacts with the other in such a way that this ensures a regular cycle of events. So the cycle begins with the production by the hypothalamus of a hormone called gonadotrophin releasing hormone, GnRH. This stimulates the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland to produce or secrete its hormonal secretions. So the two hormones produced by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland are known as gonadotrophic stimulating hormones. And these are your follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH. The ovary also produces hormones and you've got estrogen and progesterone. So the function of the follicle stimulating hormone is that it causes the graphene follicles in the ovary to develop and also stimulates the ovaries to produce estrogen. Luteinizing hormone causes ovulation to occur and it stimulates the corpus luteum in the ovary to produce progesterone. Estrogen causes the rebuilding of the endometrium after menstruation and it also stimulates the pituitary gland to produce LH. It also inhibits the production of FSH. Progesterone maintains the endometrium of the uterus in readiness to receive the blastocyst. It also inhibits the production of FSH from the pituitary gland. So we'll look at the different phases of the menstrual cycle. I want you to take a moment to look at this diagram. Notice what's happening with the endometrium and also look at what's happening inside the ovary. So when does ovulation take place? Okay, so looking at the changes that occur during the menstrual cycle. You've got the menstrual phase. This is about day one to day five. This is when the endometrium breaks down and it results in blood loss. So we call this menstruation. The follicular phase is day 6 to day 13. This is when the endometrium is repaired. A graphian follicle grows and matures within the ovary. Ovulation usually occurs on around day 14. This is when an oocyte is released from the graphene follicle 
into the oviduct. It's sometimes referred to as the ovum. The luteal phase is day 15 to day 28. This is when the endometrium thickens and the empty graphene follicle develops into the corpus luteum. This will degenerate if fertilization doesn't occur. So now that we've looked at the different changes and the hormones involved, let's tie it all together. So FSH is secreted from the pituitary gland and this causes primordial follicles to develop into primary follicles. Now most of these will break down by follicular atresia, but one will develop into a secondary oocyte. This is surrounded by granulosa cells, as you can see in this diagram. The cells of the membrane granulosa divide to form an outer fibrous layer called the theca externa and an inner layer called the theca interna. The theca interna secretes a fluid which forms the antrum. This structure is then called the graphene follicle. LH from the pituitary gland stimulates the granulosa cells to secrete estrogen. So we say that this is the follicular phase. Okay, let's have a look at this diagram that includes the hormones. Notice how estrogen, that yellow line there, is gradually increasing as the granulosa cells secrete estrogen. This phase lasts from about day 4 to day 11. And estrogen levels reach maximum levels on day 11. Then you have a sharp rise in LH, which causes the granulosa cells to reduce estrogen and start secreting progesterone. The drop in estrogen and rise in LH causes ovulation. So that's when your secondary oocyte is released into the oviduct. So looking more closely at the ovary, you can see that the secondary oocyte is being released out of the ovary into the oviduct. Now the secondary oocyte is surrounded by a protective layer of glycoprotein called the zona pellucida. A layer of granulosa cells called the corona radiata also surrounded. Now this oocyte is going to move down the oviduct by peristalsis. Back inside the ovary, the follicle transforms into the corpus luteum. So under the influence of prolactin, this secretes progesterone and some estrogen. So can you see how the progesterone level starts to increase? Notice how the increase in progesterone develops the endometrium with increased blood supply and storage of glycogen and lipids in the cells. So the endometrium is now ready for implantation. If no fertilization takes place, the oocyte undergoes autolysis. Estrogen and progesterone have inhibited FSH and LH. The corpus luteum degenerates and then all the hormones fall. So the levels fall until estrogen and progesterone levels are very low. The endometrium breaks down and then you have menstruation beginning. 
then the FSH and LH levels start to increase again. Now, if fertilization does occur, the hydrolytic enzymes from the acrosomes of the sperm digest the layer of granulosa cells surrounding that secondary oocyte. They also go through the zona pellucida. Now, looking at that oocyte, the secondary oocyte was held in metaphase 2. So when fertilization takes place, it proceeds with meiosis and it completes meiosis. The second polar body degenerates and the sperm's nuclear material enters the ovum. The ovum produces granules that do prevent the entry of other sperm. Then about 20 hours later, the nuclei combine and we call this a zygote. So this will start to divide by mitosis. And that concludes our lesson, the end.